Five billion dollars. That could be the tab when the dust settles on the 2016 American presidential election next year. Backstage in this high-stakes drama is a small group of billionaires. They're forking out a mountain of cash for their favorite candidates. Who are these tycoons and why are they so interested in the race for the White House? To help us nail down the facts, we're joined now by CCTV's Jim Spellman. He joins us from our Washington, D.C. newsroom. Jim, if we look at the political press here in Washington, it tells us that this election may cost anywhere from 3 to $6 billion. Where does the money come from? Hey, and, and, and let's start at the bottom with individual donors. In the U.S., individual donors can give only up to $2,700 in the primaries, another $2,700 in the general election for a total of $5,400. $100. Only a tiny fraction of individuals give the max. In fact, less than 1% of Americans give $200 or more. Next are what are called the bundlers. These are individuals who've maxed out the $2,700 limit. They then convince others to donate to. Usually, these are well-off people who raise money from colleagues in their industries. They then give it to the campaigns in what's known as a bundle. And then we have the PACs, political action committees, and super PACs. So PACs are organizations uh, that can donate to campaigns. They're often associated with corporations or labor unions. They face various degrees of donation and spending limits. Uh, a pair of Supreme Court decisions back in 2010 open the door to so-called super PACs. These are groups that are not allowed to coordinate directly with the campaigns, but they can raise and spend unlimited amounts of money. These plus a few other types of organizations have created this system where huge amounts of money flow through the election process. Much of the money comes from and is controlled by a small group of extremely wealthy people. Gaining the support of these billionaire backers has become more and more important in U.S. presidential elections, which get more expensive every cycle on end. Okay, Jim, let's talk about the Republican field. There are now about 17 candidates running, and they all need money to stay competitive. How do these billionaires impact the race? It's a crowded field, and these candidates will need money and lots of it to get to the next level. Most of them would love to have uh, the backing of some of these billionaire mega donors. The biggest donors to the GOP from the last election cycle were Charles and David Koch, the Koch brothers they're known as, uh, heirs to an industrial fortune, casino magnate Sheldon Adelson, and hedge fund manager Paul Singer. Their networks contributed millions in cash and resources to Republican candidates last election cycle. They've mostly been on the sidelines so far this time around. They're the biggest prizes this election for GOP candidates when it comes to donations. Most of them have been doing what they can to get in front of these billionaires, try to win their backing. And Jim, if we look at the Democrat field, it isn't as crowded. Hillary Clinton is the front runner, and most think she will win the nomination. But has she been chasing this kind of money too? Well, she hasn't had to quite yet, but she certainly will want and need the money and the resources that go uh, with uh, these kind of big donations when it comes time, if she is the nominee, to go up against whoever wins the Republican nomination, especially to go up against the barrage of negative ads she is bound to face. Some of the biggest donors on the Democratic side are media mogul Fred Eichaner, hedge fund manager Tom Steyer, and the Hungarian-born businessman George Soros. At this point, the campaigns on either side aren't really spending that much money. When this becomes a national TV commercial-driven campaign, that will certainly change, Anand. Most candidates want money from these billionaire backers, of course, but this race has a billionaire running in it. Donald Trump, how is that changing the dynamics of the race? It, it's a total wild card. Modern elections have become so money-driven that candidates are almost forced to do full-time fundraising. Donald Trump says he'll pay for his own campaign and doesn't necessarily want or need money from donors. Listen. Because I don't need anybody's money. It's nice. I don't need anybody's money. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists. I'm not using donors. I don't care. I'm really rich. I'm really rich. That's become almost a tagline for Donald Trump. That was from his announcement that he would run for president earlier this summer. He since said he would accept donations as long as they come with no strings attached. He's the current frontrunner in the GOP field. It's impossible to say what will happen to his candidacy, but if he continues to be successful, it could be a major disruption to politics as we know it in the U.S. if one candidate just doesn't need donations from fellow billionaires. Right, Jim, thank you. That's CCTV's Jim Spellman reporting.